Hey guys, and welcome to part 22 in the first Steps and Preparation series. Now, uh, I'm sorry about this tutorial taking so long to appear. It's because I was working on my other tutorial series, which is called Appetizer, by the way. Um, please check it out. It's about creating a scene with olives and a glass of water and stuff like that. And But yeah, um, I'm nearly finished with that one. And I also uploaded already a few um, videos. So now we're back to... Um, the compositor in the first steps and preparation series and today we're going to talk about how to combine images or to be more accurate how to combine um, the different render layers um, if you want to split your scene into separate layers um, to then influence them individually okay and this is actually more tricky than you might think so yeah, let's just duplicate this um, cube. Let's move it over here. Let's just scale it up really big. Now let's just take this um, this lamp. Let's move it in front to over here. And let's just um, increase the value to, let's say, 5. It doesn't need to, go to look good at all. It just needs to um, illuminate the scene nicely. Let's make that blue. Okay. And let's also make sure that the background is actually something pretty bright and slightly reddish to get a nice contrast to the blue okay so let's just render that scene and this is an awful camera perspective so let's just change that to something over here okay so this is our scene and um, fairly simple you have one cube in front of the other and the thing to note is that here it looks like this okay completely as expected You've got one cube in front of the other, and there's there's a slight um, edge there because you can see that they are differently illuminated, obviously. Now, <clears throat> the thing is, you might want to, in the compositor, uh, manipulate this cube separately from this one. So you might as well just separate them into separate um, render layers. Okay, so let's just do that real quick. Let's just duplicate that. On the first layer, let's just uh, render everything besides the second one. And on the second layer, let's render just the second one and um, let's just move that one to the second layer. Let's select both layers and let's hit F12. And now there's one last thing we need to do. We need to grab this lamp, M, to move it to a separate, uh, different layer. And then let's just shift select the second one so now it's on both layers and it illuminates both cubes. Okay, so now I hit F12 again and you can see that works just fine. Now let's go to the node editor. Let's change it to Compositor, Use Notes, Backdrop, Shift-A, Output, Viewer, Shift-A, Input, Render Layers, and Render Layers Series 1. Okay, so now we've got that on, our, or on one layer and this on the other layer. Okay, and now we can manipulate them, we can add in uh, RGB curves, color balance nodes, whatever we want, and then in the end we're going to recombine them. Okay, so um, let's just try that and let's actually just bring in our scene all the nodes that we can use to, 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 to reach that goal. We have the mix node, we have the alpha over node and finally we have the C combine node. Okay. So let me just say a few words about those. We already know the mix node, it basically just mixes um, two images together according to different blend modes and according to a factor value. Okay. Um, if we use the alpha as a factor value, then we can combine images in a clean way. The second thing is the alpha over. It uses the alpha input as well, but it's got a few advanced options for um, the alphas, like convert, pre-multiply, and then a value for the, uh, well, pre-multiplication, you could say. And then we've got the C combine, which works with the uh, C passes. And by the way, the C passes are the depth passes, which means um, in the C passes, you actually have the information on how far away from the camera each pixel in an image is. And if you have two C values from our top and from our bottom layer, then we can compare those two and then a blender can say what has to be in front of what, and therefore we can mix them up. And yeah, so um, they have a few advantages and disadvantages. And one thing has to be said beforehand, if you work with full sample anti-aliasing, we'll talk that in a minute, a bit more in a minute about that, but then you don't really need to worry too much about what you use and how you use it because it essentially just works, okay? We'll see why that is in a few minutes, 
But if you don't want to use it with full sample anti-aliasing, because this really increases your render times or the compositing times to be more accurate, then you need to um, pay attention to a couple of things, okay? So for now, let's work with what we already know with the mix node, okay? And let's make three setups for each node. Okay, let's start with mix. Um, come on. Um, okay. First of all, if you just want to combine images, you need to make sure that you have the uh, mix mode, okay? Because this way, um, the images won't be changed the way they look. They will just be... Um, basically, you just cut out this cube and you put it onto this re render layer and then it works, okay? So to do that, you can just plug in this on top input and this one to the bottom socket and combine that to the viewer, okay? And since right now we have a factor of one, what it does, it, it takes this image and then just puts this image over it um, according to 100%, which gives us the exact same thing as this image, okay? And if you change it to 0.5, then it takes 50% of the upper one and 50% of the lower one, and you just get this, which is also not fairly cool. So what we need to do, we need to make sure that only this part um, is taken into consideration, okay? And to do that, we need to work with the alphas. And one rule of thumb is that, or actually two things, um, your primary layer, okay, is, is, is this one in this case, and then your secondary layer is basically added on top of that, okay, that's the first thing. And the second thing is that if you want to composite this image over this image, then you need to use this alpha value. Uh, I could, I, I'm going to show you why in a second. Um, and the other way around, so in this case, since this is the lower input, we need to make sure that the alpha value of the lower input is actually our alpha value to be used. So we're going to plug that in as the factor, and you can see it works. Well, or so to say, well, we can uh, try to solve that problem in just a few minutes. And what did it, what exactly happened? Okay, it took this image, and then it took this alpha, um, like this, and then wherever this image is white, um, it takes this image, and wherever this image is black, it takes this image. Okay, and then you get this result. Um, but there is one problem, and that is that because um, this image is anti-aliased, you can see that there's a transition from white to black, and there is this gray value there, okay? And also, on the image as well, we have this gradient effect going on because of the anti-aliasing, okay? Now, if we'd work with full sample anti-aliasing, we'll do that in a few minutes, as I said, um, then we wouldn't have that gradient effect, okay? It would be completely sharp and jacked and ugly, and then it would be made smooth only after everything is composited together, therefore this, this is not a problem. But in our case, we don't work with that, and we want to see how we can do that otherwise. So, in a word, with the mix node, we do not get clean results. Um, so we are going to use something else. Let's just put that over there, and let's use the alpha over node, okay? Same thing here. Um, the primary layer is our top input, and the one to be added on top of that, or multi uh, mixed on top of that, is the lower input, and the alpha of the second one is our factor. And you can see we get this result. It is, I'd say, exactly the same, okay? So nothing changed much, but you can see those extra options, okay? And you can check convert pre-multiply, and you can see um, the problem is less um, less dominant now. You can no longer see it that well, but it's it's still clearly there, okay? And messing with that down here, you can see it does it changes something, but essentially it, it, it's like this right now. And then if you increase it, it gets worse, and then finally it gets better again until it is once again the same as in the beginning. So um, this is not really a solution either, okay? Um, but but it's a bit better than that. Okay, so usually you should work with alpha over instead of mix. And then a final thing is C combine. We'll talk about why you want to use C combine a bit later. Well, usually you don't want to use it until unless you use um, full sample anti-aliasing, but I'm going to explain that in just um, a few minutes. Now we're going to connect that to, not to there, what am I stupid? Um, we're going to connect that to there and that to there, okay? Then we're just going to see to there and this see to there, okay? And I just uses this image 
and this image and it, it compares this c value those c values to those and wherever one c value is over the other then the corresponding image that is in the front is actually used quite obvious and if you change connect that to the viewer you can see this is what we get and now this is clearly worse than what we have over here and the reason for that is that our c pass is not being um, anti-aliased and that is a problem now we can visualize or make our c pass visible what you can add a map value okay and in order to demonstrate what this map value does um let me just see we are going to use uh, actually this c pass okay because th that cube over there is much bigger now let's just connect that and now all you have to do we'll we'll talk more about the map value node in one of the next tutorials actually in yeah we just been covering the vector um nodes and then just set the size to something smaller 0.05 and also make with V make sure you're zoomed out a little. Still too big. Here we go. And now you can see what happens. It's actually just um, the depth passed. Okay, and with offset and size, you can actually just what how the depth is supposed to be displayed. Um, and you can see this is very checked, although we do not have full sample anti-aliasing uh, checked, which means that the C pass is not being anti-aliased, okay? And therefore, if you use the C pass, and if you want to combine images according to that, then you get jagged edges, and it looks like this, essentially. Now, let me just delete that again, because we don't need it anymore. Um, now, the reason why this, there is this outline is, of course, not because of that, because we don't we have the same issue with alpha over end with mix but you can see it's much ugly because it's so jacked and to solve that problem we can go to use alpha okay and then it just takes the alpha into account to change that issue and you can see it's now smoother and more even but it still looks ugly so yeah as you can see c combine is always a problem unless you use full sample anti-aliasing um, or if you have it on an object that has enough motion blur or whatever where you cannot really see it. But anyway, so um, bottom line, quite simple, we cannot use any of those methods this way. It doesn't work. And the reason for that is because of this outline, this ugly pink outline. So if this weren't pink but something else, then maybe it would work. Okay. And as you can see under layers, um, this is, by the way, our, our, our primary layer, which just renders the big cube and this is the small cube. We have this option sky. And we talked about that before, I believe, when covering um, render layers. Um, and if you uncheck that, then instead of the sky, you will just have a completely pitch black background. Okay. So now let's once again render that and check mix alpha and C combine. And you can see it now works out pretty well. We do have a problem with... Um, the darker edges a little bit, but if you zoom out, man, we are fairly, we've zoomed in fairly much. You cannot really tell the difference so well, okay? And now if you go to alpha over, you can see that problem disappears entirely. You can, you, you still have a small border, but you can basically not make that out. Um, and one important thing there, um, you could think that this is just because this is blue, okay? Because blue is dark and black is dark as well. But if we change, um, the blue color to a let's say bright ugly yellow like this you can see it works as well um it, it is a bit more obvious now but still i think this is a fairly good um combination of uh yeah fairly good now about the c combine you can now see let's uncheck use alpha you get this okay because uh, the C pass is not anti-aliased, then from this image, it it's not exactly on the same on the same uh, line, and therefore it also takes a little bit from the black parts, and it's just not that accurate. But if you take use alpha into account, uh, if you take alpha into account, then you get this much better image. Okay, it's still less smooth than the alpha over, which is the way to go, but it's much better. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, it still isn't quite ideal but it does its job fairly well, and I think nobody would really notice something like that. Um, furthermore, if you're rendering into a still image, people might notice, 
but then you can just um, check full sample anti-aliasing for your final render and if you're making an animation where things move where, where there's maybe even a bit of motion blur then this won't be a big problem at all um, but yeah in general avoid using the C combine and go with alpha over okay okay so now about the second issue we have here or the second example Let's say I just prepared a new scene here. Let's see if a scene like this. Okay, we've got two cubes. They, um, one cube is within the other one. Um, as before, we have a lamp that is on both layers, layer one and two, a camera, and then in the node editor, the same setup as before, check use nodes in the compositor. We have two render layers, and we've got an alpha over and the C combine node. I left um, out the mix node because right now we don't need the mix node because it's just a duplication, a, a, ver a worse duplication of the alpha over. Then we've got a viewer and a composite top, a composite output. Okay, fairly simple. And now let's just see. We have two render layers. Okay, one cube on each. The first render layer only renders the first layer. The second one only the second layer. Um, on both we've got sky checked and nothing else everything else is um standard and default and also we have 50 percent at this resolution now if we render this um this is what we get and now we've got this image okay and we've got this image and um you can already see one difference to before um the cubes are basically shadowed by the other cube especially um wherever they are in each other okay so yeah it's kind of obvious and now if we come connect this one to there this one to there and the alpha to there then you can see this is not what we want okay and also of course once again we have this ugly border there okay so first thing to do would be to go into the render layers and to uncheck sky over here and now let's once again render this and what we get is this okay and now that part looks basically fairly good but um still this cube is not supposed to be in front of the other one okay and if we do it the other way around like this you can see that that doesn't help either because now it's just the other way around but now this cube is in front of this one it's still wrong so let's just um, put that back there and that back there yeah that was my goal like this okay so how to solve this if we do the same thing down here with the C combine then you can see we get this and um, if now we use alpha um, we have the problem that this is the wrong order. If you want to use alpha, you have to change that actually, like this. And I can use alpha and you see what we get. Um, but it is really jacked. And it just doesn't really look the way it should, okay? Um, yeah, so in this case, C combine isn't really an option. Unless, of course, we use full sample anti-aliasing. Then the C combine is quite good because now you can see by the way, it took 0 0.63 seconds before, and now it takes... Oh, I didn't combine that. I didn't input that to the combine. Let's just re-render this. And you can see this is the result. And, um... Yeah. Uh, this looks pretty okay. And that is because we used full sample anti-aliasing. But usually we don't use that, and therefore we cannot use C combine. So let's cut that again. So we're stuck with that, essentially. And let's just pull that back to non-full sample. And this way, we still have the same issue as before. And we could also, once again, hit convert there. It always helps. And now, in order to change this problem, um, we have only one option, actually. And that would be to use masking options, okay? So I talked about this a little bit in one of the previous tutorials about about mask layers and about all C. Um, now mask layers are basically just there to 
make it so that you can pick individual layers to mask others, okay? But in our case, we're just going to use all C, so it just uses all the layers to mask the other layer, okay? And if you look at this particular um, example, we can either look at it this way, that this is occluded by, or, or is um, masked by this one, so we cut this part out, okay? And then we can just add it over the other one, or we look at it that this one is actually added over this one, so we're using this one and use this all C on that. And you get a better result, let's just compare the two results, okay? So we can either um, uncheck, let's just get, check Sky for both for a second. And now we have to decide where to check Sky and where to uncheck Sky, okay? If we say, if we use all C on this one, okay, then we also have to uncheck Sky for this one, okay? And now if we have 12, you can see this is what we get. Um, and it is not fairly good. You can see this problem over here. And that is because now, you can see this is the image we are going to put over this one according to the alpha. And because if we change that to this one, so we can actually see the alpha, you can see here it's anti-aliased. And here it's anti-aliased as well. And therefore, after the combination, there's a certain part that just stays blue, which looks ugly, and this, it's, it's certainly not the way we want it to be. Um, and also, here it's not quite ideal, though we cannot really change much about that, okay? Because you can see, actually, in this case, um, unchecking converting per multiply can even help, but it's really not, not that big of a difference. And now, uh, the way to go is the other way around, so we have to check sky again and uncheck all C for the second layer, and do the same thing for the first layer, in the opposite way and now you can see that this doesn't work at all now we have to change that to there and we have to use this alpha now and now you can see this looks much better okay um, let's just go back to that and you can see that now it, it basically works okay so always think like this what is on top of what and then make sure that the thing that comes on top is actually um, skyless and is masked through all C and then you can kind of create this okay and um, just to show you what mask layers does right now we clicked all C but we could also as well just select this second layer and now the first layer would be masked by the second layer and now you can see we get the exact same result also this one is masked out by this one Okay, now one last thing. Um, you can see this dark border there, okay, which is not something we basically want. And the question is, why is there this dark border? And that is essentially because here we have, once again, anti-aliasing. And here we've got that ugly shadow, okay. And because there's this shadow, it is quite obvious that some of this black will also shine through um, over here. And it's just impossible to ever get it really, really clean, okay. So in general, try to avoid situations where, where one object is into another, in, in, within another object, unless they are on the same layer, which then doesn't create any problems at all. So, um, now look at how this looks right now. And I'm just going to over here, and on the first layer, we're just going to check both. So it actually renders both layers onto this first render layer, and now, you can see it looks just fantastic. Yeah, it just looks the way it's supposed to look, okay? But unfortunately, you cannot achieve this result by compositing them together. Okay, so to summarize, um, if two objects do not intersect with each other, like for example this, then this technique I showed you in the first part of this tutorial works fairly well. Um, if they do intersect though, then it's kind of a hassle always to really do that because you can always see um, dark or, or ugly spots along, ugly lines along those intersection lines. If you don't care about that, it's it's fine, but if you do, then you need to use another method. For example, you could go with object index or material, material index or with one other method where you just use the alpha, you separate the scene into different parts, like we did here, but you still have a combined part where you render everything on one layer and then you use the alphas of the other parts just to mask things out. Something I'm going to show you within the next few episodes and tutorials as well. Um, finally, let me tell you one thing. There is one other way to separate your scene into, uh, to recombine your scene. It's a slightly complicated node setup, that's why I created a separate side dish for that, which just focuses on how to combine um, it according to this node tree, actually. As you can see here, 
Um, it relies on not combining things pre-multiplied with unpre-multiplied, and I'm just going to show you how to do that in the side dish because it would be it would go a bit too far in the first steps in preparation series. This is already fairly advanced in my opinion, and it's kind of hard to grasp sometimes. But yeah, I hope I was able to clarify things a little. I hope I was able to show you how you can combine your different render layers after all. And yeah, as I said, usually try to avoid intersecting um, objects or in general objects that are at the same time behind each other like here and in front of each other because that can give you problems with compositing. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.